Hey everyone, I'm Patrick Jones and welcome to episode 54 of That Gives Me Anxiety. I, if you're watching the video, you caught my eye just kind of looked to the left there. Because I wasn't sure if I even plugged in the mic yet. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm still tired. How was your Thanksgiving? I hope it was wonderful. Mine was very relaxing. Watched a ton of game show network, which is a lot of fun. But then driving back from Minnesota to South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, <sighs> took it out of me. I, I'm still, uh, I'm still very tired. Drove from Minneapolis to Knoxville, Tennessee, getting in around two in the morning Eastern after losing that hour going from Central. So long day. And then we would only have five hours left from Knoxville to Charleston, but uh, you have to go through like the mountains and stuff of Eastern Tennessee and Western North Carolina where everyone decided, I mean, there's a lot of traffic, a lot more than usual because it was the Sunday after Thanksgiving, but there were an insane amount of accidents. So it basically doubled. It's just a lot of time in a car. And so, yeah, I'm still, still recovering. But we went to the Viking stadium, the Vikings NFL stadium in Minneapolis, amazing stadium amazing it was a terrible game they lost like 40 to 3 to the cowboys but you know they had uh hot dogs and beer so i'm not on the team <laughs> it's able to cook a lot i think i'm think i perfected stuffing so uh you know i was gonna say put that in your pipe and smoke it but it's not like we're having a competitive stuffing i want you to have st good stuffing too well, anyway, I have a great episode lined up, keeping it light as we ease back in from we, as if everyone drove from Minneapolis to Charleston. <laughs> Some people stayed in their house, which uh, I'm so jealous. Oh, God, it's exhausting to travel around the holidays. So, yeah, keeping it light, I guess, for me. And we're doing episode two of Admitting to Movies. That most people dislike that we like the mini series within that gives me anxiety that I've been working on with Titus Peoples. The two the two movies this week are Bright, which is a Will Smith movie where it's set in a fantasy land with orcs and fairies and elves and dwarves. Uh, but he's a cop in Los Angeles. And my choice was Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo. Rewatch it, you know, before you judge me. Rewatch it and just ignore everything you know about Rob Schneider. The movie's silly. It's fun. Captures early 2000s where right after 9 11, we just needed some silliness and we got it. But before we get to the discussion of the two movies, just want to remind you if you're liking the show and you want to support it and support me, you can make a donation through the Buy Me a Coffee link. It's in the description wherever you're listening. You can check the show out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And YouTube sound like my uncle learning about youtube for the first time used to and if you're liking the show please remember to rate and review it on whatever platform you're listening to it on that helps boost the show little algorithm insight for you there well thank you so much for listening hope you had a great thanksgiving and enjoy Joining me now on the podcast to talk about movies that we're afraid to admit that we like because a lot of people hate them is Titus Peoples. What's up, Titus? What's going on, guys? I'm back. I'm yeah. Back. Yes, sir. <laughs> We've got more movies that you're probably, you read the headline of the podcast and you're going to be like, oh man, they like that movie? Like that bullshit? <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about the movie Bright and Deuce Bigelow European Gigolo, the second one in the Deuce Bigelow series. But you brought Bright, so I, I had never even heard of it before. So I'm curious, like, how you found it and, and uh, what you like about it. So what I like about it, one, it's a sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Two, it stars Will Smith. Mm -hmm. So pre-slap, pre-slap Will Smith. Pre-slap Will, yes. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. That's how we're going to have to talk about Will now. I like Will pre-slap. Like, yeah, know? right? It's just like Tom Cruise pre-crazy. I mean, I guess he was always crazy, Word. but, you know, it's like I view Tom Cruise Tom a little Cruise. different now. Pre-couch jump, great guy. 
Yeah, right? Seriously, post-couch jump, yeah, guy you wouldn't want to be caught in an elevator with. <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. But Will pre-slap. So, okay, so Will has this thing. It's mm-hmm. a gift and a curse. He's been in two highly successful sci-fi films. Independence Day and uh, the zombie one, I Am Legend. I forgot about that one, but that was decent. But I was referring to Men in Black. Oh, that's right. Man, how did I forget about Men in Black? Yeah, so he really does have a ton of sci-fi, huh? Yeah, but this one didn't really work out too well for him. I don't know. These last couple of strings of sci-fi films did not work in Will Smith's. Like, it didn't cater to the star that he is. Right. Yeah, I, put it in there. I feel like Netflix and has right this. In front of those films. Yeah, like Netflix has this plan that they'll just have like a mediocre script or idea, and then like throw all the budget at like a, a Will Smith, like a star. Right? Remember, like Sandra Bullock did that. Don't look at the monsters, otherwise they'll get you. I forget what the name of it was, but oh, um, what's the movie called? Something like you couldn't look at them. Bird. Oh, bird. oh, bird song, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of those movies. Yeah, <laughs> but I, you know, so when you told me about this movie and you wanted to do it, like I'm a big Lord of the Rings guy, and so in the intro, yeah. I was like, "Let's go!" Right? Like, there's fairies there's you know they mentioned dwarves i didn't see any dwarves in there but there were also orcs Orcs. and 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 elves and people all mashing together and it was a cool world right like so i was like i was in all right so in my defense i'm not big on the lord of the ring stuff but when i saw an orc dressed as a cop set in la i was sold on that what about that you just like the idea of it, it's it's like, something different. It's something mm, different. Yeah. But sometimes, as Hollywood can prove, being too different can mess things up. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you got to gauge it. You got to gauge it. You can't go too far left. You can't go too far right. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, right. And so, it's like kind of mapping our experience of like race relations with like the police onto like a different species, right? It's like, I feel like it was like trying to to make some points, but it was, I don't know. It was maybe it was just like too silly for such like a heavy topic, right? Really, it was. It was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. But all right, so we have this blue skinned orc. Yeah. I mean, what was stopping him from being a brown orc? I don't know. But I guess Will Smith being the brown cop, it only makes I got it. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I try to not delve too deep into the skin context of the cast and stuff like that. But especially especially for that. fictional character, right? Creatures, right? Like <laughs> right. Yeah, like the movie was set in California. Will Smith plays a cop and he has an orc as a partner, and they're looking for this wand. I mean, I like the film. I like the film. But at the same time, like, you know how, like, you watch something over and over again, and then you begin to see, like, you know what? Holes. Yeah. Holes, and, like, you probably just had a bad day. You picked that film, and there was something in that film that stuck with you. So you might have liked the film more than you were supposed to. Right. That's You just wanted to like it so much, right? That you just... Right, because it's Will Smith. A... Like, who doesn't like Will Smith? Yeah. Chris Rock. Free slap. Yeah. Free slap. <laughs> slap you yeah. Post slap. Eh, eh. Man, like, you know what I mean? Post slap Will Smith when you um, ask anybody, you might get the, uh, I don't know. I don't I'm going to skip this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so I think the reason why people like write so much is because it gives the idea of supernatural components a breath of fresh air. We've only mm. seen orcs and elves and dwarves and all these other mythological creatures set in like the woods they got on big horses and armor it's good to see an orc driving a car mm-hmm. yeah or, or coming out of a corner store with a bag of chips yeah that's yeah, kind of that interesting was, 
It's such a fun world for sure. Yeah. It was kind of like, like Lord of the Rings meets lethal weapon, right? That's how I viewed it. Right. That's exactly what it was. That's yeah. The, exactly. With the dash of Harry Potter, with the dash of Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, exactly. That's right. But like, so once the world was set up and I was into it, like the plot just like has so many holes and it requires a lot of suspension of disbelief, which I'm totally fine to do. But like, it just, after a while, it was just like, okay, this movie is just kind of like fine, right? You just put it on yeah. and just let it go. I will admit that the film was everywhere. And again, this is a film that if you're a Will Smith fan and you started it and you started to get lost, in the back of your head, you're like, okay, I'm going to stick it through. I like Will Smith. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Might as well just finish it. Yeah. And break is one of those films. Like, <laughs> just like a TV dinner. I, I, I put it in the microwave. It's hot. I'm sitting here. I, I don't want to make something else. I'm just going to eat it. <laughs> right, right. That's what... That's ex yo. That is a great comparison, right? It's a TV dinner. Like you heated it up. It has the little baked chicken or whatever. Yeah. The little rice, like that's still cold after you heated it up for like three times. Uh huh. But, but here you are. Right. This is it. This is the, the your choices have led you to here, and you might as well just finish it. Might up. as well just finish. It. What's in your freezer right now? What's what's your go-to like freezer, you know, microwave stuff? Right now, my go-to freezer microwave stuff. I like Jamaican beef patties. Oh, nice. Like so that's like, a good one. I'll throw in I'll throw in a beef patty. Or if I'm not feeling too beef patty-ish, I'll throw in like a hot pocket. Like everybody got hot pockets in the freezer. Yeah, it's a common. That reminds me, I gotta go get some. <laughs> Yo, hot pockets are dope. Yeah, right. And that's a free ad. I mean, we don't. Yeah. In mine, I, I always keep like pizza rolls in case I like have too much. I pop too many edibles, right? You just need that comforting idea that you could at any time hit up <laughs> some pizza rolls. Pizza rolls are dope. Pizza rolls are dope. Yeah. I've seen somebody cook them different too. Deep fried. Ow. Oh man, that's like the most American thing I've ever heard. Just like <laughs> it is. How do you make it fatter? <laughs> you deep fry that shit. Word. Word. <laughs> How do I end up on my 600 pound life? Oh, right. That's deep fries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, so after a while, you begin to watch this film, you see what's going on, you understand the characters, and then the story, when you think you got the story, it shifts mm -hmm. and it changes. And it's just after a while, you get a little lost in the story, but then it picks back up then you, and then you get a little lost again. So yeah. as I said before, it goes back to the fact that I guess the studio was like, people are going to be confused as fuck by this, but being that it's Will Smith, Don't watch playing it. a cop again. Mm -hmm. like, we like Will Smith as a cop. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we stuck it through. Right. You know what? The, the other thing, it felt like it was trying to do too much. I feel like Netflix was thinking, all right, we're going to build this world and we're going to make seven movies out of this thing. There's an infinite number of stories that you can tell in a world that is kind of fun where there's all these different like mythological creatures in there. Right. So you just have to like get people excited about it, you know? So you have to take them around a little bit, let them see a little bit, right? We only really see LA like What's it like in Europe? What's it like in Australia? Like, you know, if there's myth mythological like creatures in the world, Australia, everything can kill you. That means that there's got to be some crazy giant bug or dragons or, or something like bumping right. around Australia. <laughs> what would the orcs look like in New York? Yeah, right. They'll probably be like the rudest cab drivers ever. Yeah. <laughs> Just like construction workers that are like catcalling and shit like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's funny. That's an interesting thought. What will orcs be like in New York? Hmm. Yeah. Canada, they're going to be like extra nice. Like, do they just take on like the stereotypes of like the area that you're describing? Probably. Yeah. Orcs would be but sick at hockey. Orcs are not the OB Drake fans. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. That reminds me of like the music that gets brought up. Like there's like a death metal song that comes on and I forget the orc's name that that's Will Smith's partner, but he's like, this is the most beautiful love song that's ever been written. I was like, that's, that's good. That's fun. Showing like orc culture of like the spectrum of emotion, but it also right. comes off as like, you know, loud and like brutish kind of thing. Loud, brutish craziness. Yeah. Can we talk? I know you've got a lot on your plate. You've got work. You've got friends. You've got family. Pets. You've got the people that you make small talk with at the coffee shop or gym. You've got that bird that you see when you wake up every morning outside your window that you've projected things onto. Look at that bird. Doesn't even love its family. It's always by itself. You do that. Everyone does that. Point is, you've got a lot on your plate. Well, that's why there's Instacart, to take a little bit off your plate. Using Instacart, you search for all your favorite foods and things that you need from the grocery store, all online, all while you're looking at that bird, wondering why it hasn't called its mom. And they deliver it to you. They go to the store and do the shopping for you. And they can deliver it in as fast as an hour. And you can sign up by clicking the link in the description, wherever you're listening or watching. And that's a great way of supporting the show. So it's a great way of supporting this show. It's a great way to make your life a little bit easier because we all know that you have so much going on, like wondering whether that bird judges you back. Well, why do you think people don't really like the movie? I mean, obviously we've described like the plot issues, but you think, I feel like there's a lot of people that like the second they see what we liked about it, they see these mythological creatures and they're like, bye. I mean, there's a lot not to like about Bright. Like, you know what I mean? All right. So as a guy that likes supernatural and stuff like that, I mean, so the thing I didn't like about Bright was like, other than the plot, I think the acting was kind of like, uh, mm -hmm. I think that girl, like that main girl that they were trying to go after, I forgot her name, but I'm like, her acting was like very, very subpar. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm talking about like, like college, high school, <laughs> film project, acting. Like, I was <laughs> like, okay, I'm not convinced at all. Yeah. And the other woman that like joins the team that they're trying to protect, like the fact that she can't talk, but like at the end, she kind of can. It's just like, ah, oh, man, it's like, now you just have this person that can't talk or like tell that character can help explain what the hell is happening. And the fact that right. she can't talk, you remove her even needing to be a character, right? It's like, what is she right. here then? Absolutely. I would rather have her say the same thing over and over, like group, like, you know, yeah. I mean? like, say something like. Yeah. Right. React <laughs> in some way. And, and there are, you would think with a film like that, that you would have a brighter idea, but you know, some bright ideas are not that bright. No yeah. Well, there was supposed to be at least a sequel, but post slap, Netflix canceled it. They can't do a lot of Will Smith stuff. So they say, like, you know what I mean? We also have to take into consideration that look at Will Smith like this. Mm. Will Smith is an A Smith student doesn't get into much trouble, and he gets into his first fist fight in school. Mm -hmm. Even though we have zero tolerance for fist fights, he's an A student, valedictorian, about to graduate. So yeah. instead of kicking him out, you put him in, in school suspension for like two weeks. Right. So, so but I don't think stuff really actually got canceled for Will or stopped, but, but they just wanted to see what his team is going to come up with the apologies and like they're really just waiting for stuff to calm down a lot that's true right you don't want to be I announcing waiting... yeah right yeah i think they're just i think they just want will and chris to sit down and talk first and then once that happens it's going to be like the smack never even happened mm. if i was chris i would never sit down with them it's it's just too Me good either. yeah but also, I can't wait for the Chris Rock special where, right, you know... He like, talks about it. He talks about it, and it's going to be hilarious. Do you feel like you have anything else you want to add about Bright? No, but guys, if you like sci-fi orcs, and you like pre-slap, 
Mr. Smith, if you're free this weekend, watch Bright on Netflix. There it is. It's right there. I mean, it's the TV dinner just sitting in your freezer, and it'll be fine. <laughs> but I will tell you this. No matter how much you heat it up, that broccoli is still going to be cold. In it's it. going to be cold. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a few bites where you're going to burn your tongue and a few bites where you're just going to be like, fuck, this is cold. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's move on to the second movie. This is the one that I brought to the table for this episode. Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo. And so I remembered, I think this movie came out when I was in like 10th grade. And I just remember like laughing. Like I loved Eddie Griffin. Very funny. He holds up. He's just like so silly. The, the jokes kind of still work. You expect a comedy to just be like crazy offensive from 10, 20 years ago, right? The world has changed so much. But like the comedy was just like silly. The, the movie kind of knew what it was and just like went for some quick laughs. And it was like an, an hour and 20 minutes, like in and out, boom. Word. So first, as you say, this movie is filled with amazing comedians. We have Rob Snyder, Eddie Griffin. First off, let's take a chance, I mean, take some time to appreciate what a comedic genius Rob Snyder is. Mm -hmm. I don't think Hollywood really understood what they had with Rob Snyder. Yeah? I think the only person that understood that was, what's his name? Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Yeah, because that, that company produced this movie. I understood that. Mm -hmm. So, Rob Snyder is a comedic genius. I've said it. I don't care how wow. anybody feels about it. He's a comedic genius. You're going to catch some flack for that. Would yeah. this film work today? <laughs> I'm going to say yes and no. Because mm -hmm. as we spoke on last episode, everybody's just too sensitive. Mm hmm but it will work today because there are a group of people that like raunchy comedy. Like raunchy comedy is still a thing. It's frowned mm -hmm. upon in Hollywood. Like, you know what I mean? Like an executive gets a raunchy script on their desk, a raunchy comedy. Depending on who they can attach to the project, it'll still get made. But let's be honest, raunchy, super raunchy comedies are frowned upon. Mm -hmm. We can't offend anybody. Yeah. But, but for what it's still for, and the time it came out, Laughs for an hour and 20 minutes. Like, yeah, right. It's just stupid slapstick stuff. Yeah. It was also funny to to see there's a bunch of jokes about where the US was in the world, right? Like when he first gets to Europe, people right. are complaining about his American shirt and like our imperialism. And like that was like when we had just in, invaded our Iraq and like we we're all feeling, you know, I, I mean, I remember I felt down. I was against the Iraq war and like it's just funny to revisit yeah. that mindset that the country was in. Absolutely. And it gave like a subtle perspective on how we see each other. Like, you know what I mean? Like how we see each other as a culture. Mm hmm Yeah, absolutely. But the one thing, okay, so this made me deeply uncomfortable. Rewatching this movie, like Rob Schneider's love interest in this movie is like, so much hotter than him he's like just like this disgusting little like gremlin guy and he's got this like like 12 out of 10 woman guy. yeah <laughs> and i don't know why that made me so uncomfortable it was just like oh dude it's like you like this woman's got to pretend that you're like interesting or attractive <laughs> because like let's be honest and i'm not one to talk about looks either but Rob Snyder isn't Brad Pitt, like, you know what I mean? Rob no, no. But hey, like, you know, it's a film, like, you know what I mean? Like, films are fake, but you want to make it look as realistic as possible. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, right. It just kept like taking girl, me out of it. Yeah, exactly. Like, the girl has to match your hotness or, like, your look, sort of. Right, thing. yeah. And it just felt like... He was sitting in the auditions and was like, her, her, her. Right, because he needed to work with her. Like, you know, what yeah. I mean? he needed to be on screen with her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what that sounded like. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear but, that you you felt that like the movie kind of holds up for like its silliness. 
And no, it does. It does. Me, I love silly stuff. Like, you know what I mean? I'm a 34. I'm a grown man. I'm, but I like fart jokes. I like bad jokes. I like crude humor. Like, you know what I mean? I love it all. Mm-hmm. And this has all that, right? It's just like right. penis jokes and... Uh... But the thing about crude humor, it has to be done smart. It just can't be dick, 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 fart, fart, fart. All over, like, like, you know what I mean? There's ways that you can write that stuff in there. So, like, it has to mm-hmm. be done smart. Right. There still has to be a plot. There has to be something that you're working towards, right? And then just moments come up where you can make those fart jokes. Right. Absolutely. Because, like, even through all the fart jokes, everything still has to make sense. Yeah, exactly. Because otherwise it should just be a sketch. Right? It's just, it shouldn't be a full movie. Right. How many SNL sketches that were made into movies were just like terrible. Today's episode is sponsored by my software tutor. Can Excel be my friend? Do you want a new friend? Thinking about making new friends both makes me excited and sad. So it, it can be hard to make friends as you get older. And so I feel like sometimes you get surrounded by people. It's like, yeah, I guess we're friends. But also if you truly connect with someone, you can make new friends as, as, a, as an adult on both sides of the fence here. <laughs> so Excel can be your friend or it could be surrounding you. That's just probably because you don't know it that well. Many people have deviated so far from the copy. Let me get back to it. Can Excel be my friend? Many people have wondered this for years. The answer is... Yes, it can. It was so much shorter than where I was going with it. All right, let's talk about my software tutor. They offer three levels of real-time Zoom-based courses with a live instructor. They all deliver practical, functional business skills in a friendly, supportive environment. That sounds nice. I mean, it could be so daunting to learn Excel or make friends. These courses will increase your marketability, whether you're an employee, job seeker, consultant, or contractor. That sounds pretty good. Register at mysoftwaretutor.com and use the promo code POD20 to save and use the promo code POD20 to save 20% off all re- 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 registrations. <laughs> Did you know that Ghostbusters is actually an um Saturday Night Live sketch? No, I didn't know that. Yes. It was? It uh, like actually aired? No, I think so, but I think they wrote a sketch that eventually turned into the film. So I can't say oh. if the film got turned into, I mean, if the sketch was turned into a film or not, but I definitely heard that it was a sketch. I'm going to have to Google that because if that exists, I, I need to watch that immediately. I bet that's hilarious. Right. Yeah. So Saturday Night Live and Ghostbusters coexist in the same world. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, because Aykroyd and Bill Murray were on SNL. And yeah, uh, I'm sure there was some. Yeah. By the way, uh, I brought this since you were in your Charlotte. Nice. Yeah. I normally wear it back. I mean, I used to wear it to the beach when I was younger. But yeah, we were saying last time about how it's just like the best colors. Yeah, Charlotte definitely has some dope colors. I like Charlotte. Yeah. Oh, man. It makes me look so old wearing it. A backwards hat like that now. <laughs> Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo, it covers all the stereotypes because you can't have crude humor and not help run as stereotypes. It does that perfectly. Mm-hmm. And that was yeah. in a time where crude humor was, you have, in order to write crude humor, I think you have to be an exceptionally talented screenwriter. Mm-hmm. Because after a while, like, the jokes just become cringy if you're not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, tur- it turns into Freddy Got Fingered. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Which we talked about and in the like, first episode. Yeah. Really. Like, and, and then to this day, like, Tom Green, ahead of his time. But sometimes I wonder how that film got made. Like, you know, yeah. like, he probably begged somebody at the studio to make that film. Yeah. <laughs> But like, all right, so the the one, you know, this this film has like really terrible reviews wherever you look at it on Rotten Tomatoes, this and that. And I think the only real knock 
is that if people just don't like the type of humor that is like it, it sets up what it is and delivers upon what it is. And if people aren't into it, then of course they're not going to like it, but you know what I mean? Like it, it, to me, it, it completely delivers on what you want it to be and, and what it claims to be right. There's no misconception. There's no smoke and mirrors. Right. That's why trailers were created. Like you <laughs> see the film, like you watch the trailer, you automatically see Rob Schneider. Okay, I know the dick jokes, the fart jokes, the crude humor is coming. If right. that's not your thing, you're not going to get anything else from Rob Schneider but crude humor. Yeah. That's right. like skip this one. That's like like I don't know. Like, you know, what I mean, like, like I don't know what people expect these days when they watch these trailers and expect something different from what they already see. The mm -hmm. preview is telling you what you're about to get into. Right. Yeah. So believe them. <laughs> right. So that's like going into a pornographic store and saying, hey, there's no Christmas movies here. Like, <laughs> ooh, look at where you're at. We don't do that look here. Yeah. Where <laughs> Where's the Hallmark Christmas movie? <laughs> what? Are you serious right now? Look at Yeah. Me. <laughs> Read it. it says X X X. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? You're in the wrong place. Yeah, so, yeah, like yo, you're definitely in the wrong place. Yeah. So Rob Snyder's type of films are gauged towards teenagers, and when and I teenagers say teenagers at heart, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and kids in their early twenties. Mm -hmm. If you're like 45 and you're conservative and you went to buy a ticket to this film, you're a fool because you're going to be offended in every which way possible. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're 45 and have a dark sense of humor and white crude humor, then you're in the right place. So there it as is. you said a couple of seconds ago, it all boils down to what you like and know what you're expecting from these people. Yeah. If you wish you were one of those thoughtful card people, but don't have the time or energy, I don't know why I did bunny ears on that. Or maybe you had a personal assistant. I like to pretend sometimes when I'm running errands that I am my own person. I make up games in my head. I might be revealing too much about myself. But you don't need to pretend to be your own personal assistant, at least when it comes to cards. Because the Cardist Studio is your personal assistant. Let's set up a situation. You think, oh, I should send them a card. But things get in the way. You're busy. All you'd have to do is jump onto thecardiststudio.com and tell them exactly what just popped in your head and, and why. And you'll get credit for your thoughtfulness. Here's what they'll do with that information. They'll get your personalized message handwritten into the card and into the mail for you. And you don't have to save space in your brain for this character that you've created as a made-up personal assistant. This bit is really getting off the rails. <laughs> It's fast, it's custom, and it's a total life changer. Hey, you are a thoughtful card person now. Thecardiststudio.com, thoughtful, just got easy. And you can use the promo code ANXIETYPOD for 10% off your orders. It makes me wonder, like, have you seen Eddie Griffin in anything? Is he is he dead? Where Where's Eddie Griffin? Yo, Eddie Griffin, I personally think Eddie Griffin got blackballed. Like, I think him and Rob Snyder got blackballed, if you ask me. Yeah, seriously. It's like, even I even see Cat Williams. Against different things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Eddie Griffin, I feel like he could do some serious acting. And like, but he's just so funny in like everything I've seen him in. I saw him in the Trading Places remake, uh, remake that he did around the same time as this. Like he... He was big there for, for a little bit. Like, from what I'm seeing right now, see, I haven't been alive that long, 34 mm -hmm. years. But sure. in the 20-something years that I've been observing film and television, I feel like every great comedy star has a short length of time. Yeah, to they do. Impact. Yeah. That's before the next guy coming and the next guy after them. So... I think in the film and television world, you got like a span of like, I would say five years. Yeah, it, it's true. Comedy changes that quickly, right? Our sensibilities change as society like progresses so much more than uh, Brad Pitt can, can make movies for the next 40 years. He can make movies for a hundred years. And it's just like, 
you know, because romance and, and drama kind of don't change at the rate of comedy. Right, absolutely. Like comedy changes super quick. It's like hip hop in a sense. Like mm -hmm. every, there's like a new genre of hip hop. Yeah, yeah. So like you got to get in where you fit in, make your money. So like, and that also goes back to why people be like, why is Kevin Hart in everything? Kevin Hart realized the time slot that he has before he's forced to become a full-time film executive or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think Kevin Hart is a funny guy. I think Kevin Hart, I like his work ethic. Like, you know. Love his work Kevin ethic. Kevin Hart said something funny that made everybody else laugh and then had me like this. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, you know, like. Yeah. You're not going to laugh at everything a comedian says. Laugh, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. There's uh, nothing against him, but it's just no. is what it is. Yeah. Right. So to put a button on uh European gigolo, it just seems like if people if it's if you know that you want the fart jokes, go for it. If you don't, skip it, you know? Right. Yeah. And know what you're getting into. Like, do not expect no Oscar worthy dialogue. Mm -mm. There's no love speeches, there's no standing in the ring, kissing. Nothing grinds my gears more than people going into films and expecting crazy elaborate things and films that don't that don't coincide with what they want. Right. Right. It's simple. I had a friend tell me Godzilla versus King Kong could have been better. I was like, bro, what what were you expecting? They weren't about to talk. These are two creatures. There's no dialogue. It's just fighting. Yeah. Right. It's, like, it's cool, but it's like at the end of the day, they're not going to be like, right? There's no like love triangle that they're fighting over, right? They're just right. There's no Godzilla was not about to tell Kong, well, this is my plane, and you're here to stop me. Like, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, bro, like, what did you go into this film expecting? A love scene? Them standing in the rain, staring in each other's eyes? Like, really, let me know. Right. So I can tell you, you're 1,000% wrong. Uh, the only correct answer is to watch a dinosaur and a gorilla punch each other. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and break stuff over each other's heads. Like Right. <laughs> Destroy a city. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's like professional wrestling with giant monsters. Yeah, it's great. Right. Absolutely. But if you're not going in for that, you're, you're, you're going to be disappointed. Absolutely. Like, if you're going in there for some long, epic dialogue of speeches, you're in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. Go watch The Notebook. If that's yeah. what you <laughs> Go watch Forrest Gump, if that's what you Right. Right. You're not getting that from these films. You need so, a coming of age story, not Godzilla and King Kong. Well, much. Titus, this has been awesome hanging out with you, man. We got to make some more of these. We got to come up with some more movies to, to to talk about here but yeah where where can people find you on social media hey guys you can find me at i am titus peoples on social media titus peoples on facebook i am titus peoples on instagram i am titus people on twitter yeah i got my twitter fingers back you know i'm out here <laughs> awesome well yeah man uh really fun hanging out with you and then we'll have to come up with another episode right Thank you so much to Titus for coming back on and, and shooting the shit and, and being silly and talking about some movies that we like that we know will get made fun of for liking. Before I get to the weird thing that was causing me anxiety this week, I want to remind you of my other podcast called Death Space Filling the Void. You can get it wherever you get your podcasts. Also a reminder of Buy Me a Coffee. It's just a way to make a donation to creators. The link for that is in the description wherever you're listening. Then there's my software tutor with the promo code POD20 for 20% off if you want to take an Excel class or something like that. If you want grocery delivery to your home through Instacart, that link is also in the description. By signing up that way, you're telling Instacart that this show sent you, which also helps support the show. Also, the Cardis Studio now has subscriptions and, and the promo code ANXIETYPOD can get you 15% off your originating order. So pretty cool stuff that I hope you guys are taking advantage of. Okay, the weird thing that was causing me anxiety this week, I mean, I, I just think it's just the anxiety associated with long drives. I mean, the anticipation that you're always, you're never going to get home, right? You're always going to hit traffic. Everything's going to get worse. You're, you're just so tired and you want it to be over. 
And, and this is coming from someone who really enjoys road trips. But normally you have more time or, you know, to really enjoy it, you just have to be, have a few more minutes, right, to, to, to yourself or have the ability to stop at a restaurant that you happen across, right? Like that's kind of the fun part of a um, road trip. And this road trip is more, we've got to get home. we got to get these fair family heirlooms but from Minnesota to South Carolina safely. And we didn't have a lot of time to do it. Simple as that. So that time crunch also caused anxiety. But thankfully we got here safely. Nothing was broken. And life is easy. Well, as always, thank you so much for listening. I don't know why I started on that. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great week. And I'll talk to you on Thursday. Bye.